To introduce our next guest is the newest member of BYU TV's Game Day crew. Finished his Cougar career in 2020 with 204 tackles. Thrilled to welcome Isaiah Kafusi to Wise Guys and to BYU TV Sports. Good to have you with us. Thanks. It's uh, exciting to be here. I've seen the studio many times, so that's <laughs> nice to be here. You picked the right night because it's the first night we can say this Saturday. That's right. Florida State plays Georgia Tech in Ireland. SMU, a BYU opponent at Nevada, and Bronco Mendenhall debuts at New Mexico against Montana State, and it's week zero. Football season's yeah, here. it's here. It's the best time of the year. It really is, isn't it? Is it weird for you, though, to not be playing? Like, how, how does that feel? Like, we, we've talked about leading into you coming on with us that you're going to be a big part of what we do this fall with all of our game day stuff and part of our BYU TV crew. We're going to start having you on, on this show with us. Um, is it weird to be in this phase of your life and not be ha having pads? You went to practice, but you weren't out there hitting anybody. Yeah, I got asked that, that question a couple of times. Like, do you miss it? What's going on? And, um, you know, the first, like, you know, year or two after, I think I was just ready to be done. My body had taken a beating. Yeah. You know, school and just the, the stressors of, you know, football, school, family, all that. You know, I was, I was relieved to kind of be done. Uh, but... Now I'm like, I get to practice. I'm like, man, I just wish I could suit up. <laughs> I wish I could just hit somebody or, or go on a blitz or, you know, drop back in coverage. So it's a fountain I, of youth for you. Yeah. Yep. For sure. And, you know, it's nice for me because I've got my, my little brother, Micah, yeah. cousin Ace, Orion, just family there. So I can kind of, you know, live through them um, and, you know, trying to just give them tidbits of advice on, hey, cherish the time here, right? Because there's no better time in your life than playing football at BYU. Now, you literally just walked in the door from practice tonight. What did you see that you liked? A lot of things, right? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm looking at the defense because yeah. I'm a defense player. I love just to see the linebackers. I'm watching their technique because this defense is, you know, if the linebackers can play really well, it, it, it really is it's set up for the linebackers, right, to make a lot of plays. So right. I'm just, I'm just a kind of, you know, trying to evaluate what are the linebackers doing? Are they hitting their gaps hard? Are they making plays? Uh, so I did see a lot of that. I was focusing on the linebackers. The DBs looked really good, like the safeties. Um, pretty deep. I think they've got a good crew there. And then, you know, just the effort, right? That's when it, when it comes down to the Big 12 football. Yeah. It's turnovers and who's, who's playing the hardest. By the way, Timothy uh, checking in late from Australia. So good to see a Kafusi. There we go. We were waiting, so for, another we, we were waiting for, for another continent to get in. How about there they're talking go. about Kafusis in Australia? In Australia. Hey, shout out to Australia. There we go. <laughs> you mentioned this 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 defense, uh, Isaiah, J. Hill's defense. I mean, if you go back, it's a de defense designed and really by Kyle Whittingham back in the day, Fred Fred Whittingham's kind of defense yeah. um, up at the University of Utah, which, which Jay then took to Weber State, and then it brings back down here. But, you know, the front, they're block eaters and gap holders, and they take up a lot of blocks, and they're really aggressive and come off. And they're expected to do a lot of damage there, but they're supposed to free the linebackers up so they can make all the plays. Yep. How fun is it to play in a defense where they just tell you, no, be aggressive, go make tackles, we're clearing the way for you, that's your job. Yeah, it, it makes all the difference in the world, right? This defense is just set up to, you know, every guy has their assignment, and when everyone plays together, when everyone executes their assignment, everyone has a chance to make a play, right? Like, it's, it's very much big play dependent. And that's what I love about it, right, is you give guys the ability to beat one-on-one -on -one blocks, to, you know, create, you know, turnovers, force fumbles, interceptions. And that's, that's really how you win games. You were at practice last year, and now you just come to practice uh, today, and you've been to practice a few times during camp. What's the difference? What do you feel is the difference, especially on the defensive side? Just the, found, the foundation of experience, right? As they have a year under their belt, they're getting – you know, comfortable within the defense. Because as a player, you start, to, you start to almost get used to now, Jay, how he calls games and how, you know, what his kind of defensive philosophy is when it comes to calling plays. And so you start to pick up on that. You get more comfortable. You know, hey, here's kind of my, you know, confidence interval of when I can overextend myself or versus when I shouldn't maybe take that risk. And Jay Hill made a comment in his post game after the scrimmage Saturday. And he said... They're, they're in the phase of this now where he's watching for guys that aren't thinking. And he said, last year, we had a lot of guys out there thinking, what's my assignment? What am I supposed to do? 
He doesn't want him to do that anymore. Yep. He wants them to feel comfortable enough that a, what do I do on this play is just second nature. And now it's how do I go make a play? Yeah. Um, are you seeing that as you're watching, especially this linebacker group? Are are they comfortable enough to not have to think so that they can just go make a play and play fast? Yeah, that's I'm seeing a lot of that, right? And, and it still takes time, right? You get a lot of young guys, and when guys are asked to step up, right, Ben Bywater goes down. Yeah. Huge, huge hit to the defense. But now the guys that are coming in, like you have to be able to trust your, you know, what, what you've been taught from the coaches and say, okay, this is alignment assignment technique right off the bat, right? The call comes in and now you're thinking, okay, what am I going to get here from the, from the offense? And how can I make a play, right? What are the weaknesses of the defense? What do I need to protect my guys? But how do I make a play? So I am seeing a lot of that. Yeah, that's good. Stephanie says, hello from Idaho Falls. We love our kooks. Isaiah Kafusi is with us. we got a bunch of questions for you. And if you have a question for Isaiah, feel free to give it to us on the live stream. Um, in and out of football, so let's jump out of football for a moment. Uh, how eager are you to dive into the TV side of, of things? I'm excited. Yeah, it'll be a, a different view for me, right? Obviously a different paradigm watching the game and, and being able to analyze the game. Yeah. Um, which I feel like I have always loved. Uh, so I, I'm excited to jump in. You know, I, I, my wife always makes fun because after the segments, right, I have my makeup wipe and I'm wiping off my makeup. And uh, Don't tell our secrets. You know, don't tell I, people we yeah. actually don't look this good. They're usually applying it by, to by, us by over and over again. Right. For all of those shows, which are really heavily lighter and all that, yeah, we have a little makeup, yeah, right? Just a little yeah, bit. This, just for this time. one, though, you guys just get us as we are. Just so yeah. they know, you just get us as yeah, we the are. shine is... This, the, is, this is a no-frills, like, <laughs> we just show up. All so natural. This is, you, you see the bad side of us, too, here. So. <laughs> so what kind of insights do you hope to be able to bring from your experience, both during our two-hour pregame show and then the game, the postgame show, where we're analyzing, you know, as what we just saw um, from the defensive side uh, and your very um, articulate... Young man, what, what do you hope to be able to share with the audience? Yeah, I mean, kind of selfishly, right? I just want to be around the game again and be yeah. able to analyze and be close to football. Um, and so I think that's, you know, great for me. But then being able to just kind of share those insights, you know, I always look to those, you know, kind of analysts that I look up to, yeah. right, who are sharing these insights of the game. And you're like, man, I'm learning football. Um, and I think it's just the game in its simplest form, right? Just being able to analyze the game share that with others, inspire others, uh, you know, not only to love BYU football, but to just love football in general. You know, as we prepare for a broadcast, there's a lot of similarities to preparing to get ready for a game on, yeah. a, on a Saturday as we're going to do the countdown to kick off our game day show and post game to what, what you're doing, not the physical part of it, but we're doing our scouting report. We're studying the opponent. We're studying our own strengths. We're doing all that. Um, how do you feel your football career has prepared you to now make this step and come join us on the broadcasting side of things? I mean, it's foundational, right? Obviously, um, never was the biggest, strongest, fastest linebacker, but I prided myself in, you know, my ability to, you know, watch film, kind of decompo decompress kind of what is happening on the, with the opponent and then be able to say, okay, here's, you know, with their tendencies and, uh, you know, have the statistical background. So I'm very nerdy when it comes to the stats, right? The, the sheet that comes out after the game. Um, but I, I do think that football really just prepared me, right, to kind of jump into this kind of next phase. Awesome. Greg is on the live stream from Southern California tonight. Greg, good to have you on The Wise Guys, former BYU linebacker and new BYU TV football analyst Isaiah Kafusi is on The Wise Guys, presented by Brady Plus. This is gut check time for a lot of former Cougars trying to get a job uh, in the NFL. You signed with the Colts as an undrafted free agent in 2021. Give us some insights as to, into how hard is it to win a job on an NFL roster? Extremely tough. I mean, talk about one of the hardest times of my life, right? Not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, right? Trying to make that 53-man roster uh, was, was extremely trying. And, uh, you know, learned a lot. Was grateful for my wife, right, to kind of hold it down. She was yeah. my rock at that time. But, you know, you, you've got 96 guys that are there that are trying to make the team, and they, you know, dwindle it down to 53. And, uh, you know, kudos to really all the guys out there trying because it is not easy. Um, but it's, it's really rewarding. What, what is it like to get the call to find out you're not on the team? Tell us, tell us your experience. 
Yeah, that is a good question. I mean, I, and I haven't really shared this with a lot of people, but for me, it was somewhat relieving. Really? I mean, it, it had been, you know, the day, I, I mean, I got cut on the last day of, the, right, you know, the cut. Right, right down to the 53 Right down roster. to the 53. Um, I'd already kind of packed my bag, right? Like I just was kind of just mentally preparing for this call and hoping that I did my best. Uh, and as I reflect, I, I, de I definitely did. I mean, I gave it everything yeah. I had. I'm happy with my effort. And, uh, you know, I, I was somewhat relieved when I got the call because it was just like, okay, like now I know what's, what's happening. Now mm -hmm. I know what's going on with my life. I'll go home, I'll train, I'll try again. Like there's going to be another call team that calls because I had a great preseason. And isn't there just so much anxiety of am I in, am I in or yeah. am I out? Do, do, you start, do you start like counting the numbers? You're like, okay. This guy's getting more reps, that guy. I know they only keep three of these, so I'm most likely going to get cut when they go down Yeah, this. well, and Indy had all their guys already. Um, they really had one spot for three kind of linebackers. Yeah. And so I already knew the odds. A um, couple of them, one was a third-round draft pick. The other was like a second-round draft pick. So they've got money invested. Right. right? And, and so, I'm, I mean, I kind of know where I, where I sit, but I've had a good, you know, I've had good production in the preseason. Yeah. I started taking some long snap reps, like just kind of show my value. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of already knew. And so who, so who calls? If the phone rings, what happens? Yeah, actually, it was just some manager of the team. I, I don't even know, you know who it was. They just came by my locker and said, hey, uh, you know, GM wants to see you. So, all right, you kind of know and, you know, bring your iPad. That's the playbook. And you, you meet with your coach, your position coach. Actually, no, I, met, I went and met with Chris Ballard yeah. first. And then you meet with you know, the head coach and the position coach, and they kind of do give a, you little little feedback, exit, yeah, yeah. a little exit interview, feedback. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was just waiting in my locker just all day, you know, all morning, because I, I knew that this was the time. And uh, you know, I had actually had really great feedback from all, all yeah. three of them. I mean, it was kind of a numbers game, but... That's how it goes. And, right? you, and, and in your mind, what you, you wanted to be able to go, I did everything I could. I gave it my effort. I performed at my best. And it just wasn't the right timing at this one. And yeah. That's what you wanted to be able to say, it sounds like. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I sleep really good at night, right? Yeah. Like, if, if there was any ounce of me that, you know, of, of regret because I didn't give it my all or, or because I didn't, you know, watch enough film, like, that would have been a tough pill to swallow. But I, I don't, I, I don't. I don't know if people appreciate how hard it is to get on a 53-man. Oh, I, I remember covering the Super Bowl for KSL. We were at the uh, Eagles and Patriots, and they, they came out to warm up. The first guys came out, and I kept waiting for the rest of the team to come out because, you know, BYU rolls out 100. Yeah. And they never came out. And yeah. I, I, that's when it dawned on me, like, there's, this is the 53 best football players in the world going against 53 more, and that's it. And then I, that, that was a... It was it was uh, impressive to realize there is no inflated rosters. It is all just fifty three. There's not fifty four, yep. and um, and that every year college kids pour into the NFL expecting to take one of those jobs. And they're all and great most players. Of the pros yeah. All the ninety yep. guys that you were competing with are all, all the best guys. Yep. The best guys from their team, right? Yeah, no, they, I mean, it's the talent is all, I mean, they're all the best of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Strickland on the chat says, I'm actually interested if it's not too personal. What kind of feedback do the coaches give? So what, when you met with the head coach and the position coach, what do they talk to you about? Yeah, I mean, the, the position coach really gave, I think, a lot of detailed feedback, right? The head coach was, was a little bit more removed, um, you know, but it was from the position coach, it was really like, hey, this, you know, kind of a numbers game. We loved what you did in coverage. Run game could have gotten a little bit better, right? Um, cause they, you know, the Colts defense very much like how the defense is now at BYU is very attack oriented. Like a downhill, right. When I was backers playing, or gap fillers, we sure. had Kyrus and Bracken and Zach Daw, right. They're just eating up blocks and we're kind of just playing behind them, yeah. making them right. Right. Mm -hmm. Playing a, what was called a fit technique. Right. Where now the Colts, it's like, Hey, this is your B gap. The ball is coming. You got to go. So I was a little bit, um, hesitant, right. I just hadn't really trained that muscle. So that was one of the big feedbacks. And then obviously the biggest one, right, is special teams. I mean, that's how you make, right. you know, a team in the NFL is, is you got to just perform and produce on special teams. And they just didn't feel like I was really as good as the other guys. Interesting. Yeah. And, and here's what's crazy. Like we said, all 90 of the guys on that roster, um, these are like, if you, you may have played some of them in college, it's like, wait, that was the best guy on that team. Wait, that was the best guy on that yeah. time. Yep. So it's all the best guys. And they, you need to be in the right place at the right time with the right, you know, 
with the right situation to make a roster. Yeah. Unless you're a crazy superstar, which are so few and far between, right? Yeah. Totally. So we asked Austin this question when I ask you of all these Cougars, there's 23 of them currently on NFL rosters, or at least trying to find a, a spot there. Um, who do you think? Who do you think would surprise you, or maybe wouldn't surprise you, that makes a roster? Now we know there's the core that are coming. Yeah, back. like hey, Tyler Algier's on the team. Jamal Williams is on the team. Taysom Hill's on the team. But like, there's a lot of guys Zach who are on Wilson's the bubble. Zach not getting cut. Right. They're they're paying him eight million. He's not getting cut. Right. So those are obvious to us. Right. Yeah. So who? You, would you go, you know, who's probably going to make it and maybe people don't think is? Is there anybody like that in your mind? That's a good question. No, we, Ryan right. Rico, we think, has got a oh, yeah, foot yeah, in the door, like, more no, or less. In, Do they even have another punter? He punted all six punts yesterday. It's like, yeah, he's, he's just a guy? He's definitely an NFL punter. Yeah. yeah. But in my mind, I like he's already kind of slotted yeah, in. Yeah, so he's in. Yeah. Um, is there, is there I, I, like, saw, oh, I think it was a, a clip of Chris Brooks. Yeah, he had yeah. a big day. Yeah, he kind of yeah. had a big day, um, which which was cool, right? Like yeah. you want to see those guys that are. You and know, he and he found a spot on the team last year. I right. mean, yeah. he's fighting to stay. And nobody expected he's, him to be yeah. a guy. Yeah. Right? So I mean, I saw that clip. Um, I saw a picture of Aiden and yeah, Jordan. like yeah. Austin mentioned Aiden. Maybe yeah. makes it could be could be a good fit there. Yeah. Yeah. So. so and, and it's like, those guys are probably in the same position you were. I don't know. Am I, yeah. you know, am I doing enough? And sometimes it's about making a play or a couple of plays. Yeah. And, and I, I mentioned this before. You, I, you know Vi Sikahema, right? Yeah. You know, so, so Vi is a good friend, played, played with Vi. We were back uh, when they were in Philadelphia, and he has a room full of footballs. And he, uh, my one son said, what's your favorite one, Uncle Vi? What's your favorite ball? And he walked over to the end, he took one, and he said, this is my favorite ball. And he had Pro Bowl balls, yeah. and you know, you know, like some Player big, like game, yeah, like you know. big time. Yeah, yeah. And and Landon took it and said, "Well, why is this? This is from a preseason game." And he goes, "Because they gave me this game ball because at the end of the game I returned a punt like 80 yards for a touchdown, and they gave me the game ball for the special teams player of the game, and the special teams coach said, here's the ball and congratulations before the game." The coaching staff had decided if you didn't do something spectacular, we were going to cut you after today. He says, so this is the ball that kept me in the league. Wow. That's and awesome. that's why it's the most important to me because I don't get any of these other balls and I don't play in the Pro Bowl or play yeah. nine seasons Without if I don't this get one. this ball. There's one play in a preseason game kept him in the league. It, that's all the difference. Right? It just takes that one play, that one opportunity you know. to just then catapult your career. Yeah. So. Hey, what's it like for a, a football player to, to knowing that Andy Reid's head of the Chiefs, don't you just kind of expect Andy Reid to draft all the BYU yeah. guys? <laughs> uh, and yep. yet, you know, he's running his business over there. And every now and then we see a Matt Bushman had a run there and a couple others. We got Kingsley yeah. uh, on the offensive line there. But does every player coming out who is an undrafted free agent, meaning – Hey, if you call me, I can come. Don't you kind of expect Brother Reed to give you a buzz? Yep, yep. I, and also, too, I think the Colts, right? Ever So I I was kind of the first one in 2021, and I think ever since then, they've always kind they've of had taken, a, guy. They've yeah. taken yeah. a BYU player. Yeah, they got um, Freeland and Slovis yep. right now yeah. back there. Yeah. So. And Keaton's actually... Keaton might be the biggest surprise for everybody. Maybe he could sneak on. And he has a chance to sneak yeah. on that roster. Yeah. He may, maybe even as a practice squad guy at first, but I think Keaton, he looks like an NFL guy. He's got the arm strength. Passes the eye test. He's, he's thrown some good ball. Like, Keaton could make it. Yeah. And it's interesting. I mean, I, I was in Sam Ellinger's uh, cl draft class. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. he's been there for a, yeah. a few years now. So it'll be interesting to kind of see, right, do they go with Keaton and kind of take some new blood or, or stick it with Sam? Interesting. And you got to have a practice squad quarterback, right? Yep. So, so maybe there's a window there. Yeah, uh, that can keep him got, in the mix. Got a chance. Yeah. Hey, former BYU linebacker Isaiah Kafusi on the Wise Guys uh, with us tonight. Let's talk about BYU a little bit. We'll trans transition from the NFL to BYU. Um, Harrison Taggart, Jack Kelly, Isaiah Glasker, Ace Kafusi, your cousin, um, Bryant Strother, Elijah's little brother, yep. right? I mean, um, Sialia Sarah, um, Micah Kafusi. Who do you like, and what do you like about this group? Are there some individuals you like, oh, I really like this guy, and I like this? Tell us about that group of backers and what you like about them. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, I, I was down at practice, right? And I, I saw the clip of Isaiah Glasker's one-handed catch. Yeah. In the end. I mean, that's just dirty, he, right? Like He's a scary athlete. Yeah, He's totally. like so long and, and athletic. And his, I mean, I, I, I can kind of compare him to Fred, right? He he reminds me of this, like, Fred Warner-esque. And he's a little taller than Fred. A little taller than Fred. 
So uh, what about Van Noy? Is there some Van Noy in him, or is it more Fred? I think it's more Fred. Too, okay. Right? Fred, Fred's more... People don't realize that... And this is no disrespect to Kyle. Kyle's a pass rusher. Yeah. Yep. Kyle's a defensive end. He's not a linebacker, really, in the NFL. He's he's played the position of linebacker in defenses where they put him on the edge and he pa- rushes the passer. And he's one of the best ever at it, right? And he's made a living at it. Fred is a crazy athlete in space. They're two completely different totally. players. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put him in the same category. Yeah. But Isaiah, to me, is very much... He could be like a Fred, right? Rangy. I mean, yeah. he just can run, right? Backside, like... These are the, the traits that I love to see because it's like, you know, if there's a fumble on the other side of the field, like I would I would think that Isaiah Glasker could be someone that could pick it up, right? Pursuing, he's got a lot of range, yeah. just instinctual. Um, so I really like what I see out of him. I've heard great things about Jack. I mean, he, I, I think, is going to be kind of a, the anchor of that defense. Uh, and then Isaiah, you know, uh, uh, Harrison Taggart. He's your right. middle linebacker, yeah. right? Yeah, and, he, and he's just, I mean, he's got that experience. He played a lot last year. Like, I think those guys coming back, you know, those core guys can really, I think, help that defense kind of pick it up. And you, you were known as a guy that could really run, you know, cover a lot of ground. All three of those guys can really yep. run. They so we got run. three guys that are the starting three probably that can all really run yeah. to the football. Well, and everyone else, you know, kind of below on the depth chart, right? Like that's what I love to see about these kind of tall, longer, lengthier linebackers is they can run. They all have put on a lot of weight. I mean, I look at Micah now, and I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, if I was your weight when I played here, yeah, I, would, I would. I mean, how, how much weight has Micah put on? Because he's really fill, th- uh, filled out. Yeah, I mean, I think he was during the summer. He got up to like two thirty three to two thirty five. Right. Um, and he played like when he came to BYU. What was he? He was maybe two hundred pounds. Yeah. Right. That's, 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 a, five, that's a different I mean, body now, right? Yeah. yeah. And so you know, I, I just love you know what Coach Anna has done right with those linebackers, and really Jay, right? Like I think both of them. Just kind of creating that culture of hey the linebackers because you look at Utah some of their former linebackers right and I played against Cody Barton and Chase right. Hansen like those two guys were making plays everywhere yeah and so to me like the defense is it's catered to the linebacker position getting pressure on the quarterback stopping the run getting off the field on third downs priorities for the linebackers those were trouble spots for the defense as a whole last year so a week from Saturday what do you expect to see. And I expect first, I expect Lavelle to just be packed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and just, and and then really, I would love to just see kind of a continuation of the last two games of last season, mm-hmm. right? Come out fast. You play physical football. You create turnovers. You prevent turnovers, right? You keep you right. protect the ball, and then you just finish strong. Like to me, that's the that's the sauce. That's the secret sauce to success. Yeah, it's it's. The defenses that Jay's been involved in always like stop the run. They make teams one dimensional. They make you throw the ball. Like yep. you're not gonna run it. Yeah. And uh, and that would be fun to see a really great run stopping defense. And with the backers that you talked about, it seems like that might be yeah some, something that they have. Um, we've gone through it saying, man, go back last year, and it's like at times it felt like BYU just wanted to give the ball to the other team, yeah. like just. Not just turnovers, but terminal turnovers. Like, hey, here, have the ball and go score a touchdown yeah. on it. And or, it's like at midfield. Right. It's on our own yeah, or, or they, it's no, like, it's a pick six. It's yeah. like pick up a fumble and run it back for a touchdown. Why don't we just spot you 14? Um, they have got to fix that, right? And if, and if they fix that, all this talk about four and a half games, is that is that crazy talk? Are they better than that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I'm always optimistic. I mean, I'm the big, one of the biggest optimists here, right? Uh, but also, I'm a realist. And I do think that, that this team has, um, you know, it's kind of flying under the radar a little bit. I think yeah. we're overlooked in a lot of aspects. And, you know, I, I, I think we've got the guys. And we've got the system, right? That's one of the most important things is the system is in place. Now the guys got to go execute. When you're down on the field, and we're going to hit you with five questions here in just a sec. Uh, when you're down on the field in a game, can you feel you can feel the crowd's momentum or whatever? But can you also feel their anxiety of oh, another third down or we can't get up there? Do you feel that, or do you feel mostly the positive vibes of when when they're going nuts? Yeah, I think for me it was just the positive vibes, right? And that's I think a culmination of a lot of things, but really just composure. Right to be, to not just kind of tune things out and yeah. say, hey, this is like it's the next play. All right, whatever happened previously, it's done. Right, it's happened. Now, what's going to happen next? Right, how can I control what I can? And so I, I never really could sense uh, the anxiety, but I love the momentum. Right, being able to just cheer and, and 
kind of pump up the crowd, right? That's what I, I really kind of focused on or felt. Did COVID, uh, the COVID year rob you of uh, <laughs> oh, some of that, yeah, think some about of those that. moments? Yeah, you know, it was it was really cool to, to look up in the stands and just see all the cardboard faces of everyone. <laughs> Wasn't just, that you know, just... Everyone's there in heart, but... Uh, it was like bizarro uh, was world. The worst. Yeah. Like we were, it was bizarro for us broadcasting. Yeah. It was crazy. Basketball was even more crazy, yeah. in my opinion. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, Dave and I sat at a long table and they put a big piece of glass in between us and we called games and... They, we acted like we were together, but he was like over on the other side of the room and we were calling a game together in an empty arena yeah. in basketball. It was so weird. It was it was extremely weird. Gary writes, I prefer to go into the season being overlooked and then making some noise with unexpected wins, which, you know, would be most of, of BYU's wins, uh, the unexpected. Yeah, Larry, Larry Wynn says, first one. and we're going to knock on wood like really hard on, he says, um, hello from Orem. Why is it in BYU's DNA to get great athletes, but we can never keep them healthy? And so far, this is why I'm not going to look. This is a really healthy fall camp. Right? Yeah. They, they've been, and, the, and we would agree that some key players, I think you pay attention to it. We Lots of programs have injuries because it's a very physical sport. Um, BYU's probably had more of its fair share with marquee guys. Um, but... Yeah, if you really pay close attention, everybody's favorite team, um, they always go, why do we always have guys get – because yep. guys get injured yeah. in the sport, right? Yeah, yeah I think the uh, Vikings are feeling like yeah, they're, feeling they're like torpedoed they're, yeah, exactly. from that stuff. Five Questions is presented by Strategy Square, delivering connection, clarity, and confidence in business and marketing strategies. Blaine's going to hit you with five. This is where people were really judging. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they're going to say, okay, so, let's see who this guy is. is. And you're supposed to, like, first thing that pops in your head, that's what you're supposed to And we to record this stuff, too. Yeah, so. So. so your favorite sports movie? Remember the Titans. See, easy. Like, he just, like, didn't, didn't even hesitate. Uh, no hesitation. What's your favorite song from that movie? No, that's not one of the questions, but... Okay. Um, I mean, the whole the whole, it's the whole soundtrack. Yeah, the whole soundtrack. Yeah, it's all good. Incredible. So, your favorite singer or band? Uh, the Temptations. Really? Wow. I'm, an old, I'm an oldie. I was that born in the wrong school. era. <laughs> I should have been... Have in, we I had was, The Temptations yet? No, no, we haven't. I, yeah, I should have been born in the 50s or 60s. <laughs> I, the old Motown. Don't the Temptations jam. have some songs in? How does your right? wife feel about that? She's okay with old oh, yeah. school music. Yeah, yeah. Oh. She she loves. I mean, she rolls her eyes, but it's not <laughs> her <laughs> country. What, what, she, she, is she country or she? Yeah, she, she, she got me into country, so I'm a big country fan too. Oh, okay. Do you have a favorite country artist? Zach Brown Band. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. but Temptations. I actually I kind of love that. The so, Temptations. That's, that's my go-to karaoke. Like anything Temptations. That's what I'm singing. Okay. One night, Let's remember that night, for the Christmas party. One night, we're going to have karaoke night here. Maybe the Christmas show will do karaoke yeah, that'll be night. Good. That'll be okay, good. your favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, honey Bunches of Oats. Okay, yeah. we, we've had no, that one before, and we, we appreciate yeah. anybody that eats sugar cereal. So yeah, We're no respecter of uh, sugar-coated <laughs> cereal. Yeah, we love We that. love them all. Captain Crunch for him? Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm Cinnamon Life. Yeah, that's that's not bad, too. So, I feel like it's healthy and sugary. So, Okay, your favorite moment... From the 2020 COVID season that we just talked about, man, that's a good question. I, honestly, this is going to be a shock. I think Coastal Carolina. Oh, and I'll tell you why. Okay, people always ask me this. That single game defined who we were as a team. Right, get a call on Wednesday. Hey, you guys are playing Coastal. Practice Thursday. Fly out Thursday. Play Saturday. I mean, two and a half days of, of prep. Like when I think and, back and a, to that and a season, trip to the East Coast. Not to right, mention they run a strange offense and they're weird really offense. good. Midline right. and, option, all that crap. And it's it's you know one of the biggest what ifs in, yeah, in what, sure. you know, to me in program right. The program history is like, well, what if we would have beat Coastal Carolina and like where would we have ended up? Mm -hmm. um, but to me, when I reflect, it's like that game was just who we were. Right? Didn't we put we left it out there? We we took a chance on ourselves. We were backs against the wall. And we came up a yard short. But like that, that moment for me will always stick. You know, your street cred just skyrocketed. Even though BYU lost that game. And, and you know what? The forces were in play. We weren't going to a big game. You know, those, right. those were going yeah. so to be something They're to keep us keep, out. Yeah. Keep this was out. a last ditch effort because you still had to come home and play San Diego State in the Ice Bowl. Yeah. But, um, uh, but the street cred of the fact that you did it, no one does that. Right. And you did it and you went across the country. Um, and so. Zach throws a pass to Dax, gets tackled to the one-yard line. That's how the game ends. Yep. Did you think he was going to score? Yeah, I did. I mean, I, I, my angle, right, it was hard to see because I was kind of middle of the field. But yeah. um, 
it looked like he was he was close. My my biggest question on that game is: sweet. Do you wish you could go back and that when their guys roughed up Zach, that you guys all went out on the field and beat the crap out of him? Because I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was the first one out. I was actually yeah. on the field before the play was done. Oh, yeah. I was kind of. You were the only one. Yeah, I mean, and my little brother actually came out too. And, okay. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, I, I wouldn't have never. I would have never jeopardized my playing time right Right, so if i would have retaliated and got kicked out then the team is like like that's not what my intention would have been but at least run out there and just make sure hey like hey like this is our this is our guy i I wanted more guys to be out there and just get in between them not necessarily to like not necessarily beat the crap but like just i wanted everybody that was on the field so it wasn't a penalty to run back there and get in between them and go, no, do not touch our dude. Yeah, and like, that, it was hard because I think a lot of guys didn't see it. So they right? didn't know they until were, after. Yeah, they were, all the they were running was, to the interception. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so they were trying to make sure that they didn't take it back to the house. And that guy was yeah. just back there just... Yeah. And it was him and his buddies. So people ask me, I'm like, I, that's what I say. I say, I don't think anybody knew what was going on because I clearly believe that if everybody that was on the field saw that, we oh, would have like 11 guys yeah. around him. Yeah, right? especially the offensive line, yeah. right? Yeah. Like they would have been probably yeah. the first And I saw that on saw. social media the other day. It's still floating around of Zach yeah, just that getting was, pounded. That was just yeah. so... So bushy. I remember that. I remember the one-yard line. And it didn't seem like we could get them off the field, and yet they scored 21 points, I think it was. Wasn't yeah, it we, like we I mean, you know, just reflecting back. Yeah. I mean, we what we had saw on the tape was they're an RPO team. Right. But what we really didn't see is those teams first stopped the triple option. And then they went, they kind of played more, you know, right. RPO. So, I mean, it was like, we could have we could have prepped better. Like, there was all these things, right, looking back. If you had a whole week to prep, because it is unique the way they block it and the way they run yeah, it. Yeah. Pulling that center every time. Like, it's like, it's a very, basically nobody in the country runs quite, that offense, yeah, very unique, um, and and, the, it, and so you, it's like preparing for Air Force or Navy on one day, yeah, which well, is really and, hard. And to Grayson do. McCall, I think, was the quarterback, yeah. phenomenal athlete. Yeah. I mean, he was incredible and right? tough, and very tough. I mean, he had had busted up his ankle a couple times in the game, slow to get up, but he was tough, right guy. back up, running downhill. Um, their their running back, I think, CJ Marable, you know, yeah. he's been kind of a, a league guy back back and forth, but yeah, they had a good team, really good team. Yeah. I mean, they were ranked what. 12 or 13 yeah. or something no, like no, that? No, no, I'm convinced with a full week of prep and having them on the schedule, BYU's better than them, but that was a tough situation. Uh, in that week, uh, speaking of, of fun feelings, it, it, the um, the game isn't set yet. Um, there's the chance that could happen because another team had COVID issues and they had to officially yep. back out and they hadn't backed out. I think it was Liberty. Um, and... Uh, the team's practicing. It's like 9 o'clock at night, the team's at practice. And I remember someone calling me going, hey, we don't have a game this weekend. Why is the team practicing at 9 o'clock? <laughs> and all of a sudden, the drums started beating yeah. up. There's something, there's something going happening. On. And Something's then the brutal. equipment truck leaves at like 10 p.m. It's like, and someone shot some video. It's like, where could this thing and be going? And they started tracking the equipment track. I mean, it was like, it was, it was something we hadn't experienced before. See, well, it was nice, too, because at the time, Kalani was our our position coach, basically. I mean, he kept Clune was there, but Kalani yeah. had sat in, you know, the previous year. So we were kind of getting all the inside baseball from Kalani. Uh, right? yeah. So Tuesday, Tuesday comes around and, you know, we're practice and he's like, Hey, there's, I got to step out. Like I'm getting, you know, blown up from Tom. Yeah. Hmm. And so he's kind of like, Oh, you know, it's, I don't know if we're going to be playing this weekend, but if we do, it might be coastal. Right. Like there was just, we were getting all these kind of, you know, inside baseball and, you know, finally, you know, they let us go Tuesday night, and then Wednesday they said, all right, like, you know, here's the schedule. We're playing Saturday, Coastal Carolina, two time zones away. We've got to practice Wednesday. Practice Thursday, we're leaving, yeah. right? Get there Friday, do a little, like, a light walkthrough. But yeah, it was it was honestly one of the best experiences, <laughs> Very right? cool. Like, so fun. To and just, so unique, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. And that was one of the beauties of the independence era yeah. to me, right? Kind yeah. of that ability to just say, oh, all right, Wednesday, let's go. You guys want to play Saturday? All right. <laughs> the whole COVID year was a tribute to being independent. Yep. Right. Because everyone else is shut down, and you're like, we're good. We'll play 10 games. And ESPN's like, you'll play every primetime yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for playing. Yep. Uh, what a what a year that was. Such a, such a fun year. It was really magical. And hey, who knows? Nobody had 
expectations that team was going to have that kind of year. Nobody has expectations that this year's team can have a magical season. You just never know, yep. do you? So we had one. We had the most important question. We didn't ask him though of our five questions. Number five. Because on number four, we went off on a tangent, which is great. What's a favorite advice your wife's ever given you? Oh, there's too much, and I feel like she's always just giving me. I, I just, I, I need to listen to her more. Right. It's just. I mean, I, every her time advice she is, you should advice, listen to me yeah. more. It, well, it, it, talk, it took me a lot of years to finally right. realize that. Man, my wife is always right. They're right. It's getting yeah, old. She, I know. I, I'm in the same boat, and I just, you know, I'll, I think I, I know it all, and then all of a sudden my wife will just be like, "Look, I told you so." Right. I, I mean, it's when are you going to learn? And uh, you know, she truly, she's my rock. I mean, she is uh, one of the, you know, she's the, the greatest mother to our two kids. We've got a, a baby number girl three on the coming. Way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, I, you know, I'll listen to her more. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's do a bonus question. Who was the greatest of the Kafusis to play at BYU? Now, now for our audience to understand, there's Kafusis that were at the U. Most of the Kafusis have been at BYU for what feels like forever. Yeah. Uh, did you have some Kafusi teammates? I, I played with Stephen Rich. Yeah, for sure. And so that that goes back a couple years, even though you're still terribly young. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, the best, the greatest of the Kafusis, and if there was a Kafusi reunion. Uh, and that debate came up. How would it go? Oh, man. I mean, I, I think. Uh, and you can answer this in two ways because you can, you can actually say who the best player ever was of a Kafusi, and then you can, a- you can also answer it with who thinks they're the best player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm answering was the second one. So I think the first, um, I heard a lot of great things about my Uncle Jason. Yeah. He was right? great up player. At the, up great at the, yeah. player. Um, was kind of robbed, right, with a shoulder injury. But I've heard that his potential was incredible. Mm, yeah. Um, and everyone, I think everyone would probably defend Jay. Yeah. As the best. Yeah. And then, I, I mean, I, you know, Bronson, he's, he's humble, but he's up there too. Yeah, right? he's yeah. a pretty special athlete, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, uh, he is. Yeah, he was on the show not long ago. Yeah, nobody um, that long, that big, that athletic. You know, you're not supposed to be all of those things, incredible. right? Yeah. What a, what a family legacy. Whether they're cousins, brothers, whatever, the the Kafusi name is a BYU name. Yeah. And it took Kafusis to do that. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, I don't know if we have time for yeah, this, but just have... a, an interesting tidbit. Uh, you know, we recently celebrated my grandma's birthday. So all the siblings were there, all my dad's uncles, or all my dad's brothers, excuse yeah. me, all my uncles, and all my cousins. And we're kind of going through saying, okay, Steve, he had, oh, Bronson, Corbin, Devin, Alexis played. Daryl played soccer. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Okay, Rich, son played football out of Stanford. Henry, you know, or my dad, Doug, and we're just listening. Like everyone, I mean, my cousin Carson is going up to the U. I think there's like three cousins that haven't ha- had the opportunity to go play college in some sport or capacity. That's it, just which is, three. Which is, and and the three of them, two of them are like you know eight or nine years old, right? So, <laughs> so maybe so, it may so still there's, there's still a, a, a shot, and it's just you know the legacy. From you know my grandparents oh, coming yeah. down and uh, it, it's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's two things. There's great, great DNA. So you guys have athletic genes, um, and and that makes a big difference. Yep. But also the legacy of you were raised in a culture where you expect to do it. Yeah. Right. Where it's like this is what we do. So you you can, and yep. you never doubt yourself, and you know you can. So you just prepare like you're going to. And I think that that has a lot to do with it. When you you're raised in an environment where you expect that that, yeah. that you can do it. Well, and it's amazing too because I have. You know, my dad and all his brothers as mentors, right? Yeah. They've all been through it and they all have kind of their unique perspective. My Uncle Jason's a coach right now, right? And it's like up at Washington and it's just amazing to be able, you know, he'll text me and say, hey, watch the game. Like, here's a couple pointers, a couple tips, right? And um, that, I think that culture that we have is very unique, but also is what helps us succeed. And it's around everybody just sometimes differently. Um, I had a nephew set apart as a missionary yesterday, getting ready to go to Argentina. And as we were sitting there, um, you started to think about all the return missionaries he's been surrounded by on all sides of the families. And, um, and, and so it's like, it makes perfect sense to him. This is what he grew up in. And, and the same thing in, in all of our families and, and in yours too with athletics and missions and all that stuff. It's, you don't have to be 16 and go, I don't know what my path is because yeah. you've just seen everyone in your life go this way. Yep. Yeah, it's the same. I mean, we just, and, and it's funny because no one ever, 
really forced any of us to play football, right? It's like not, my dad's not saying, hey, you know, we all played football. We all got scholarships. We all, you know, had a chance to go play in the NFL. It was like, hey, do you want to play? You can play. If not, that's all right. Right. It wasn't ever forced down on us. It just kind of organically is what. And you watched, but you had a love for it, and then they fostered that love for it. So, hey, we we do have another question directly, and this is Les Namengah, who's a great friend of the show. Also, a world famous artist, oh, by yeah, the way, in Santa Fe, New um, Mexico. Yeah, in Santa Fe, like world renowned potter and painter, like amazing. We yeah. love that he is on the show all the time. We got to bring him on the show sometime. Like he's Plus would be good. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. I but he it. asked, which game would you rather count as a win, the Coastal Carolina or Utah third place? Yeah, this well, one is like salt in the wound for me because I think Utah would be my. my that would be your choice. Yeah, um, be your choice. I mean, obviously, right? That that's where you know the injury to my right ankle, Corbin going down, mm-hmm. Matt Hadley breaking his foot. Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. To, yeah, to me, that was, uh, that, I think that's the one I would It's 27 to seven. I know. Yeah. You know, we, we all felt that. We had to do the post-game show, yep. which you'll be a part of now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have post-game shows after phenomenal things, and we have the same post-game show yep. after sometimes where yeah. things go yep. the other way. And right. no. like, yeah, I'm with you. I think yeah. I'd always take Utah. Yeah, I and mean, we would have been nice up there. Yeah. You know, at Rice Eccles to come away with the win there. I know, I know. Hey, it's great to have you here. We look forward to hanging out with you for a long time on uh, BYU TV. And you'll find that um, no one tackles us. Um, <laughs> yeah. Game days are long. We eat pretty good. We stay way healthier. Love Fans love, love it. it. And, uh, and, and we, um, we're excited to tap into your, into your mind and how you see the game and, and have you explain it to folks. Yep. Well, thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate it. And to those tuning in as well. Uh, what a cool experience and, and to be able to talk to BYU football it's just what a dream yeah. we're talking it That's all over the world it. and it's really fun so we're it. looking forward welcome to BYU TV welcome to well you've always been welcome around us since yeah. you were playing so, uh, so now, by the way since we've got you still here um, uh, to your credit and, and you may remember this or not but when BYU would lose no one likes to come out to the post game show right but you would <laughs> yeah you would all the time and uh, it's not uh, it's not by mistake that you're joining our BYU TV crew. Um, and at the time you didn't know it, at the time we didn't know it, but you always came out when times were bad and in times were good. But you learn a lot about someone who will come yeah. out and address when things didn't go right. And um, and we've said many many times that uh, that, that there's the Tyler Baddies, Isaiah Kafusis, that we can name them. We can name yeah. the five on our hands of those guys who came out when when it didn't work out, but you still came out to talk to your fans. Yep. And um, th- that's a credit to you, and also um, it's helped you get to where you're at now, uh, <laughs> because in two weeks you'll be sitting with us doing the same thing. Yep. And I think that's that's a full circle thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would always, you know, Brett would come out and he'd, he'd just be across the room and he'd be looking at me and I would know. Uh, but that's part of the game, right? It's, yeah. Right. It's to the respect to the game. That's what, you know. even when you're in college, like the college coaches say, be a pro. Like, let, yeah. let be a pro at what you do. Be professional. Part of that is facing people when things aren't great. And that's why, that's why NFL GMs and coaches love BYU players. Really? Because they, I mean, this program prepares you to be a pro.